I'm Chad. I'm Dad. No, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be Dad first. Oh yeah. You're Dad. I'm Dad. I'm Chad. And this is our channel. Okay, so there's a tab under here and I need to drill through and match the hole up. So this is for the fuel pump. It gave me five inch and I think two and an eighth this way. So I went ahead and drilled this hole and it matches up with this tab. So this is a pretty cool deal. So you can set, set this in there like that. And then I measured off of here and I got 68 millimeters on each side. So I knew that was straight. So how are you going to find that hole? I've already put the belly skin on so we can't drill up this way. So they make a hole finder and this is so simple. I'm like, wow. So each one, so this is a number 11 hole. So each one is different. So this is for number 11 and then I have the 30s, 40s, whatever down here. So you find your, the appropriate size, which is number 11. So you lift this up, slide this through and the, the little button on this side, like I said, is size for the hole. So you slide that guy up and under your material and it seats down into the hole and then it straddles the material like so. Now this side is ready to drill. It's a little drill guide. So now you have a perfect hole through your the top material going into the bottom material. Let me grab a Clico. There you go. It's so simple, it's stupid. <laughs> okay, so I wish I would have known this whenever I first got started. So maybe this will help some of you guys. Yard store is a great place to buy tools. And then we get our rivets from HansonRivets.com. Aircraft tool supply is another one. Yard stores and pretty good on their prices. And then Hanson Rivet is great on their prices. So the hole finders here. Okay. They're pretty inexpensive. Looks like 26 bucks. I'm trying to figure out what this 42. Oh, these are inverted. So you can go up through the bottom of the hole. And, yeah, through the bottom of the hole. I don't know. I've never had to use that. Maybe I probably needed it, but didn't know what it was. But anyway, 26 bucks for a five piece set. I wish I would have had a 13 inch because when I did this hole here, the six inch was literally like that that close to so i had to do this on my eyeball and it was a little bit off so i had to make the hole a little bit bigger for it to, to fit that's the first time i think i've really needed the the longer than the six inch so if you can live with making that hole bigger i wouldn't get the 13 inch i'd just get the six or you just get the 13 inch sometimes you can't get the 13 i guess you wouldn't be able to get the 13 inch in some places okay so yard store I told you guys about that hands and rivet this is how i figured this out again i told you i put the belly skin on i've already riveted it down in order to figure out i hate these clamps i hate these and i hate nut plates but they actually make a tool that, that clamps this down to hold it for you it's about 30 bucks it would be nice to have but you know only building one airplane i wouldn't buy i wouldn't buy tools like that if you can get get away with it what i did here in order to figure out where this hole was going to be this piece was actually a little bit bigger earlier so i slid this guy up to the material and then i circled a hole where that was going to be so you see how it's on with that line here so then I slid the idle clamp down on this side and I did the same thing. Found the center line and did it here as well. And then I just took a ruler, put it down the center line and took a magic marker and, and drew a line all the way across the material. That way you can put the, you can put the hole anywhere on that line and it's going to line up with your idle clamp. So then I did a number 40 and then I did a number 11 to ma match up with this 316 bolt, but it ended up fitting dead on. So that's uh, another little tip on how to find the center line for these AO clamps. I mean, that sucker is dead on. So just take your time and you might find a better way than that. But the, this is this has worked for me pretty well, but mainly it's just taking your time and measuring five times and cutting once. So anyway, I hope that tip helps you guys out. Okay guys, here's another another little tip. Sometimes you'll drill a hole and then it will be off. So you'll drill four holes and a couple of them will be off and the bolts don't fit right. So what I did here is I actually took a one by four, I think that's one by four by, no, it's a one by six and set the mounting plate on top of it. And they give you a measurement on where they want this hole, okay? 
So then all you have to do at that point is mark your hole, line this, this end up with it. I measured the distance from here to here and I made sure it was the same distance from here to here. So that squared up the fuel pump. Then I clamped the fuel pump down on that mark. Well, clamped the fuel pump down. Well, no, I'll back up here. I actually made marks with a magic marker here. I squared the fuel pump up. I don't know if you can see that, but I made a mark here and here on the side and on the rear and the side and the front. Okay, so that gave me where the fuel pump needed to be in case I bumped it or whatever. So then I moved it over here, got it squared back up again, clamped it down, okay? Then I clamped the one by four to my bench. And one thing that I like about the bench, and I did this on purpose, is I put about three inch of overhang on this MDF and that allows you to clamp whatever you're working on to that MDF. So it gives you a little lip there to clamp to. So when you build your benches or if you've already built your bench, you can always put something over it, screw it down, and I'll give you a, a place to clamp to. But there you go. So then I just took a number 11 and I used that as a pilot and I drilled each one of the holes. That way when you put your bolts down in there, they're gonna be perfectly straight. You're not gonna have anything off. You're not gonna have to wall or any holes out or whatever. So again, just take your time and think things through and you'll be a lot happier with the result. Dad and I have messed up so many things that we've had to repair or order because we got in a hurry trying to get the plane done quicker and it's just not the way to go. Just haste makes waste on this stuff, guys. Just take your time. Hope that helped you guys. Okay, we started on the exhaust system and the instructions that come with the system are not provided by RANS, they're provided by the exhaust manufacturer and these are them. So I really like how they pointed out where everything goes. They tell you to put number three and number four first. If you're looking at the front of the engine, this is gonna be number one, this is gonna be number three, and then on the other side, it's the front cylinders two, the rear cylinders four. So we started by putting, so it comes in pieces. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is slide number three onto number three. Dad, was this already, Never mind. was this already together, Dad? I put that together. What, what is that? It's just a, a stud. Okay, so it slides over it twist. when you twist. You okay, twist there. so number three to number three. Dad said he twisted it and that went onto the stud there. So you wanna put this clamp on and then come over to number four and go ahead and loosely fit it up. Still gotta do, I wanted to loosely put everything on, make sure everything fits before I started tightening things up and I'm gonna use thread sealant. Oh, we got these baffles done. Rand still hasn't got the parts yet. I was putting this together and that I was like, man, that's not right. And uh, no, it's not right. But the new part that Rands has connects to here and I don't see how that's gonna work, but we'll wait and get the part and, and then see. But yeah, this this little contraption I made is not gonna, I, well, it'll work, I just don't like it. I took some scrap material and made it work there. So we got all the, the brackets put in on that. Okay, so Dad's gonna demonstrate. They're, they're numbered. So you slide two to in, oh, nice. Man, that's pretty nice. If I weld it together, it would never fit like that. All right, guys, here we go. We started at, uh, oh, around noon today, one o'clock. It's 6.20. So this is why you follow the instructions, which we've known we had to do this for a while, but we riveted the boot cowling on the airplane before any of the avionics went in. So today we decided to go ahead and take it all out before we get any further. We just want to see what it looked like. Yeah. We found a couple of washers and and uh, nuts that we dropped. Lots of trash. Yeah, yeah, that could have been avoided by just simply following the instructions. But anyway, that's what we've been doing today. Just get this uh, monkey off of our backs, getting this done, getting it taken apart. The Avex rivets are pretty tough to get out. Um, once you once you get the head drilled out, they don't like to come out easily. So we ended up having to be really careful and grind them down with this flush with the material and then tap them out. So it ends up, show you what it ends up looking like after you drill the head off. And this is after I ground the top piece, which is this piece. So I'll gr I drilled the head out and then I ground it down flush with this and then lifted this piece off. And then you end up with this. And if you try to push down, the way that Avex rivet fills that hole up, it's just really tough to get it out. So I'm going to go ahead and grind these guys flush with the material. 
and then they tap out pretty easy. But we've been doing some calling today to different shops to see what they would charge to build out our panel. One shop wanted, this is pretty much what we're doing. We're gonna use the vertical power, I'm pretty sure, which is pretty neat. It gets rid of all the, the breakers. And then uh, we're gonna do one G3X and a G5. And then our radios, transponders and everything are gonna be, uh, they're not gonna be on the panel. They're gonna be remote, so they'll be, be controlled through the G3X. And we're gonna, we're gonna have them cut the other side out for another G3X. And then we're, we're just gonna leave the blank in for right now. And then later on, we'll probably put another one in. But we wanted to go ahead and have it wired and cut to make it a lot easier to put in later if we decide to put one in, but. Yeah, for 35,000, I think all of the materials are around 18-ish. There is a discount if you buy the G3X in a bundle with a couple of things that you're gonna need for it. I can't remember off the top of my head, but there's about a thousand dollar discount buying those as a bundle, which you're gonna need them anyway comes with the connectors and basically the things you need to run a G3X because you, the G3X is 38, 3900, but you still need it's a magnetometer. It's the compass magnetometer. looks like it's right here. Maybe it's one of these little boxes. And then the compass, all that's like 1500. And then there's another thing that's 599. Anyway, like I said, if you buy it all together, it's, it's a thousand dollars cheaper. Okay, so in the instructions it says to put the oil drain in, and, but it doesn't say where. There's two of these guys. There's one over here and one over here. And there's also a drain right back there. So it says put that in there and safety wire it. And there's the hole for the safety wire. So I'm going to turn it a little bit more and safety wire that up. We got the um, NICs put on all the nuts. You need to swivel on a couple of these half inch and tighten these up. We did 180, it said 180 to 200. We did 180 inch pounds. There's no clamps that goes here or here where these slide together. And then once you get the muffler on, so there's a little dowel on this clamp and you'll actually drill a hole. Once you slide the muffler on, you'll drill a hole here and that dowel will slide up in that hole and then when you clamp it, it doesn't allow it to turn. It's a pretty neat idea. And this little guy right here is clockable. This actually, I've got it where I want it, so I'm not going to move it. But this guy moves around. Got all the boot cowlings off. Everything cleaned up and clecoed back together. My dad's working on that right now. But it's going to make it a lot easier to do all the avionics with this boot cowling off. That's why the instruction says not to put it on until you're done with the avionics.